All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I don't know how many people are here because I can't see, but I'm glad if, if you're just joining in, um, we're going to have some fun with some artist trading cards. Uh, artist trading cards have been around for a long time. Of course, I haven't looked up the history, um, but it's been a long time where people send little small pieces of art and they trade with other people. And it's called artist trading cards. Uh, but many people now that aren't really considered artists, you know, they don't, everyone's an artist, of course, I want to say that, but um, you don't have to be an accomplished artist to participate in an artist trading card swap. You just, you know, can hop onto those. Um, this, uh, about last month, I hosted one um, with my uh, my craft club, and we're going to do another one because they're just so much fun. So what I thought would be fun is today with Yasutomo products, kind of showing how cool our products are for making artist trading cards. And I'm gonna kind of go over the products the best I can, but at the same time, give you some ideas. Now I've got some artist trading cards here on my table. It's kind of a mess. Um, I'm gonna be featuring the pure origami paper because it's one of my favorite collage kind of uh, papers. I'm also going to be talking about the Detail Master Pigment Liner because it is perfect for lettering. And this is going to be the star because I didn't realize until today that our new watercolor pads, five by seven inches, are actually perfect for artist trading cards because when you uh, cut this down into quarters, they're exactly the size of an artist trading card. So let me explain that. Um, artist trading cards, the only rule with artist trading cards, and I'll show these cards in a minute here. They are, they're basically two and a half inches by three and a half inches. And here's the beauty. <laughs> you get one of these pieces, this is a five by seven. And guess what happens when you cut down, uh, you cut down this into quarters. One, two, three, four, it's exactly. So basically I can cut this uh, paper into half, in half and a half again, and I have perfect, artist trading cards. So I wanted to say that because that's, that's actually, I just found that out today. I just kind of had the light bulb go off today. So I'm going to be using the uh, watercolor pad. You can use the cold press or the hot press that we have, but it's five by seven. I'm going to use that as my base because all I have to do is cut this into quarters and I've got four artist trading cards. So the two and a half by three and a half inch rule, you can cut your cards out ahead of time. Like I have in the past, I used to just cut out stacks of cards and I can create just freehand watercolors, doodles, whatever I want. I can also um, take a full sheet of, let's say, paper, watercolor paper that you may have, or watercolors that you may not have liked so much. Like this one, this particular one is in progress. I had done this rainbow in a larger sheet and I cut it down and I was able to make an artist trading card out of a larger sheet. Um, this is what I do a lot of the time. So I've got lots of those where I take, you know, a, a watercolor that may, I may have, I'm not sure I can put this back together, but um, you can see what I mean. I just cut them, cut the mother sheet down. So I'm going to just demonstrate a little bit about that. But let me kind of, before I do that, I just before I go crazy and demonstrating and my table gets all crazy, I want to show you um, some other, some artist trading cards. This is a, from a swap that I just did. did. And I just love this. And I can see some of the ways that we can use the Yasutomo products in these in these uh, in this uh, piece. Like this is a piece of watercolor paper. So that's the base. And then it looks like a little doodled piece, some little drawing. This is from one of my ladies in the club. And she had done some um, little mindful doodling. And that is perfect. The Detail Master is perfect for that because Detail Master Pigment Liner makes nice pigmented, non-fading uh, fine lines from a point one up to, uh, let's see, the sizes are great. Uh, the uh, point one, which is really little, a three, which is pretty little. Then you get a five, a seven, and a 1.0, which is a little bit thicker. So you can get all kinds of line uh, variation with that. So just keep in mind, um, the Detail Master is a pretty new, product for us. And I think it's going to be, I'll show you some ways that I used it, but I love these. These are little pieces of watercolor paper that have been collaged and doodled on. And it just made a beautiful little artist trading cards. 
Now, artist trading cards can be portrait or landscape. These are portrait, and it probably wouldn't matter if they go in any uh, direction. They could be collaged, watercolored. Here's another artist. This looks like it could have very well been stenciled, but I think it would be great with our Sumi ink. Just doing some Sumi ink marks and then making a uh, beautiful card out of that. But what I'm seeing that really works with these is taking a large sheet that, let's say, you have a large piece that you just don't really want to keep because it's just too big or you don't like it, but you can cut it down and it becomes this beautiful composition all of a sudden. And there's a little lovely one, just watercolor and pen. Um, I think that's so sweet. Very small little lines and the detail master would look really, would work perfectly for that. Very simple. And oh, the, she, laid, she labeled this basket case. Now, Another thing that people do on the backs of the cards is you put a little, uh, well, this one I put uh, a little positive thing because I just felt like doing that, but you can put a little piece of paper on the back or you can write on the back of the card what it is, the title if you want, the date, things like that. So let's, here's one I just did the day, a rainbow is a promise and I use the detail master um, on the card and now I can add that later on. So, but there's ways you can do this too with just making collage. And I'm going to show you how I did that. Here's one. I did a little, instead of the artist trading card, instead of putting the thing on the back, now these are like little kindness cards, something I can give away. If it's not, a, if I'm not participating in an artist trading card swap, you can also just have these in your, keep them in your wallet, you know, give them to somebody who you, might wonder, you know, maybe they just need to have a smile that day and they just, you know, um, they just want to have something really creative and that's nice little bits of art. And if you don't have a lot of time to do art, what a wonderful way to give yourself time to do some art. So I'm going to just show you uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is just a simple collage. Now, if you remember last week, maybe it was um, a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, we did something called snippet rolls, right? Using the rice paper. And we made collage, a collage with um, all kinds of these pure paper. Remember, if you remember that, these are just, this is something that's now ready to go. And then I sewed it. Um, I'm using, I'm using the rice paper as my main uh, substrate and then just use nori paste, which is this paste, which is great for rice paper. I used that and then glued it on and then just made a big long roll. So I wanna take this card, which has already been cut and it's already been watercolored. So it was just basically a big old watercolor. And if I wanna do a mother sheet like that, I would start with my five by seven here because I'll have four and I can do a big wash of watercolor. I mean, I could even do one now, <laughs> why not? I'm just gonna grab a little, let's see, I'm gonna grab a, paintbrush. I need to get one that's kind of big. Um, maybe one that has, I can do a wash brush. And I can also use some watercolor pencils. I'm going to try this too, because I haven't used these in been a while. I'm going to just take some colored pencils and I'm going to make a little watercolor scribble thing. And this is how fun artist trading cards are. You can just do anything you want on them. But what I'm finding is just more fun and freeing to do like a, a master sheet of just making marks and colors. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do some wiggly kind of things here. Scribble, scribble with my Quick watercolor question, pencil. Karen. Cheryl's yeah. asking, is the backing rice paper or the painted part? I'm not sure if I'm quite- Oh, the backing is rice paper and the, the other, the uh, painted part are the collage bits of pure paper. Thank you. Okay, so. The rice paper is really nice because it comes on a, you know, it comes on a roll, the 6MMK. I think we've talked about that. I'm just scribbling while I'm talking. It's even better. I'm going off the page a little bit because this is a mother sheet. This is a master sheet. I keep saying mother. Um, it's a master sheet. It's actually um, just, I want it to be e kind of evenly colored all over the place. And I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to see how it, how it happens here. We'll see what see what I can get out of that. Um, and then I'm gonna let this dry. I'm just putting some water on this. Ooh, it's pretty. And maybe just think of it as a background right now. 
and just just water gently going over the the uh, pencil marks that I just made with some water. I could spritz it, but I just wanted to see how this pencil just you know dissolves on the paper, and it's really pretty. I like that, and it just kind of give me a soft black a background. Now, if I were to take these pencils and go back into it while the, the paper is wet, let's just see what happens there. I'm going to take. That's pretty though. I just think maybe I should leave that alone. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to stop, but of course I'm not going to. I'm going to just go and put some marks in here and just see what happens. So now I can get a finer mark because it's wet. I can just kind of go back into it and just get a little bit more, maybe some more texture. And this is just fun. I'm just having a little art moment without having to worry about composing anything. I just do want a background. So there, I got that. And I'm going to let that sit and dry. And when it's completely dry, I'm going to cut this into quarters. And hopefully by the end of the session, I can start an artist trading card series set of four out of this. So I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to go to this little piece that I'd already done. I've already painted this. It was cut from a, a, a master sheet. So I've got, actually I've done a few on these. So, but you can see, I like the bright yellow background, just, just as a background. And this is how easy you can make things happen. I'm gonna take a bit off of my card here. I'm just gonna take a little bit off the roll. And this is why I'm gonna make this so easy. I'm gonna just put it on the card like so. And I'm just gonna like, this is a nice composition and I'm going to take the, I'm going to make this really easy. I'm going to make this so easy. I'm going to use, instead of gluing today, I'm going to make this really fast. I'm going to just take a little staple. Uh-oh, not working. It didn't work. Let me try that again. There we go. I'm actually stapling it right along the stitched line. So you can't even, you could barely see the staple. And then I'm going to trim this piece off. And I'll save this little bit for something later. I might even use it, you know, maybe in this. But I've already got the beginnings of a really nice artist training card. It's kind of got a nice yellow background. And now I could take something and I'm, I save these little things. They're watercolor focal points. I mean, little simple, small things that I like to save. And I'm going to just kind of go through them. And maybe one of these. I like that. This isn't that nice. <laughs> now I've got a simple thing. I've, I've actually, that was a watercolor heart. Just, you know, watercolor. And then I used the detail master to do the lettering. And now I'm just going to kind of decide where I want to put this. I can put it here. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to cover a little bit of that. Just a little bit of that. Now I'm going to use the nori paste, but not right now because I've got special uses for the nori paste. But for this one, I'm just going to put a little touch of glue right here, and I'm just gonna set it right like that. Now that is finished, pretty much. Um, that's one card. And then that's, now I've got that one in the landscape style. It seems like I do that a lot. I don't really do the portrait style as much, but maybe I should. But there it is, that's a finished card. And then when I'm finished with it, well, I am finished with it, so I'm gonna put this piece on top. And I've got a little trick that I like to sh show you. Um, sometimes people use glue sticks and because it dries fast. And I really like using, if I can find it on my table, I like using a bone folder. And the bone folder, a real bone folder, we've got um, there. No, well, it's some, um, I don't see it, but that's all right. It's okay. I'll just still do this anyway. So I've got my staple here, which kind of is going to get in the way a little bit of this, but I'm just going to put this card um, back or this little piece of paper that identifies it that it is an artist trading card or if I don't want to do that I could put the little something on the back just to finish it off and it also makes it heavier and it kind of just finishes it especially if you have like like messy things going on in the back it that actually just makes it totally finished so I've got a little lumpy here and a little lump there it's all right. The staple it covered up the staples. Nobody would really know that I used a staple because it's covered. But that's how that's one done. So that's how quick that was. Now, the next one, I'm going to show you something really cool. And I'm going to use some nori paste. 
I think it's be fun. I'm going to just take a plain card, just a plain piece of watercolor paper, and let me just grab. Let me try to get it. this is the better one. This is thicker. This must be some other scrap. So there you go. Now I'm going to take some paper that I just printed. I've got some um, Hanshi rice paper, which is a really the thinnest paper we have. It's called Hanshi. It's it's amazing. It's like it's a tissue paper. And I'm going to grab some some orizogami. <laughs> it's um, basically folded and dyed paper, much like shibori, that's done in fabric. And I appreciate the viewer last time who corrected me, <laughs> told me that this is called orizo orizogami. <laughs> and I wanted. I'm glad I now I'm saying it correctly. So then I've got another little piece of this is some. Um, uh, pure paper that I had used the artist crayons, which are these. I think in one of the, in one of the demos, I just colored on um, the artist crayon and then I used ink to go over it. I did a little resist thing. I mean, so many things you can do um, with this, but I'm going to just cut out or I could tear. This might be fun to see what it looks like. The pure paper, if you notice, leaves a beautiful edge when you uh, tear it. And that's what I love about it. After you've like, let's say you've colored it with Sumi ink or what or whatever, you've still got that gorgeous colored core. And I'm just going to compose a collage. And now I've got to kind of just work it. This is a piece of um, pure paper as well. And I just normally I keep all my little few pieces of paper, extra scraps in a uh, this little bowl. And I just kind of go through and pick out what I want. I'm going to pick um, a light and a medium and a dark. So this is my dark. I'd say this is probably medium. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And then this is my light, but I still want to get another color in there, I think. So I'm just going to grab some paper out of here. Maybe, let's see, this is some more pure paper. I'm kind of not sure. I think this is a little bold, but I'm going to go ahead and use the yellow. And I'm going to put some yellow paper, get something yellow on the back. There we go. And really, I don't want to think too much, but it's kind of tends. I tend to do that. So <laughs> who doesn't, right? So I'm going to put this on. It doesn't quite fit my card, but that's all right. I'm going to use for now. I'm going to start using the nori paste because I want to just show you. Nori paste is wonderful because you can get your fingers on it. You, you can get really messy in it, but it, it does um, clean up with water, and it's totally reversible. So. I'm going to use my watercolor brush, totally safe to do that. And I'm going to just use that and put some, I can actually put the paste directly onto my card. This is going to be a messy one, but I'm going to love this. This is why I think when, when you just have a big pile of collage papers, you can just put your Nori paste on. If you want, this will give you time to reposition your paper and move it around. If I did this with white glue, that wouldn't happen. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm just kind of putting on a little thin layer of nori. Okay. And I can leave that jar open and it doesn't matter. Now, there could be some wrinkling, but that's okay. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to lay it over my card. And I'm going to use my bone, bone folder. I'm going to grab a bone folder real quick. I don't know why I keep losing them. <laughs> I'm just going to grab an old one or something. Now the folding tool, the bamboo folding tool might work. Let me try that. As long as I don't scratch the paper, I can use that this bamboo folding tool to kind of burnish it down. But I I don't want to rough be too rough with it. Except I now just scratch. I just now put that down nice and flat. And that's the this is actually the uh, pure origami paper, so it's not rice paper. But I wanted to show you how you can get the nori paste to lay, to have it lay flat. Now I'm going to put another piece, maybe this one, I'm just going to take, I'm going to tear this one. This is some 6H, I believe. I'm just going to kind of do a little curved thing, and I'm just going to lay a little bit more nori. I'm just going to lay a little layer over it. I'm just going to cover the whole thing, because the nori paste will disappear it won't, you know, it doesn't leave residue. 
And now I'm just gonna paint it right over. You could do this with gel medium to, as well if you have only gel medium, but the gel medium, it will disappear. Your, your images or the paper will get more transparent than with nori paste. So now I've got this little thing going here and I'm gonna trim this because if I don't trim it, I can't see the composition. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just kind of trim the sides off. Then I'll know what I'm dealing with. I don't want to trim my base, my card, you know, the art, the base card, which is the watercolor paper. But I'm just trimming those little bits off so that I can see what I'm working with. So this kind of looks sort of landscapey again. <laughs> and now I'm going to take another piece. Let's see, I'm going to take this tissue. This is the Han sheet. Now, what I love about this. I'm just going to take a little bit off here. What's interesting about this is if I use um, gel medium, it's going to disappear fairly. Just show you the difference. Um, the gel medium and the nori paste are compatible. So if you use nori paste first and then you decide, oh, I want a little transparent uh, bit, then you can do that. I'm going to put a little gel medium right on top. This is just matte gel medium by Golden. You can put that on top and then I'm going to just lay that right over the whole thing, just maybe just cover the whole thing like that. And now I'm going to just paint it over. And what's going to happen is that tissue paper, this is Japanese tissue paper, Hanshi, it's our 6A or 6E. Basically, the um, gel medium, pretty much once I get all the, you know, the uh, moisture inside those fibers, that's going to just disappear. And now I've got this really cool pattern on, on top of that. So I'm going to let that sit for a sec. But see how it's just totally compatible with the nori paste. It's uh, totally perfect. I'm not able, uh, I could do this, like I said, with the gel. Now, with the uh, nori, if I did it with only the nori, this would not be as transparent. So if I wanted lighter lights, I'd use the nori paste for that. I'm going to trim this also, just to get that little extra off. This is just one way to have fun building a, an artist trading card. You can do it any way that you want. This is using the kind of a mixed media artist trading card. So I've got that little bit there. I like that. And I like the white. I think that we needed, it was getting a little dark. And this is going to dry perfectly that color. Now I'm going to try just for fun. I'm going to show you. Using Nori paste, what will happen? So here's the nori paste. Oh, not the nori paste. That's a piece of tissue. 6E. And I'm going to clean my brush. Up. There's not a lot of water on it. And I'm going to use just nori this time. Then maybe I'll just do maybe just a little part of it up here. And a thin coat, a thin amount. And I'm just going to lay it kind of, I'm trying to compose something. <laughs> So I see I've got the circle kind of happening here and this circle continuing. And now I'm going to put it right on top. And if you notice, I'm not getting the transparency, but it's sticking beautifully, but I don't have the transparency. And that is what is beautiful about this because I've got one side that's almost just almost invisible and the other one's lighter. So it's just kind of a nice way to be able to, to um, to make different levels of light and dark on your card. Now I'm gonna let that dry completely and then probably will be a while because Nori paste takes a while. Um, then I'll decide if I wanna put a little focal point on it or if I just wanna write something on it. But that's one way. So just kinda of wanted to show you the fun ways that you can at least start making your cards a little bit colorful. Now I've got the little edges off there and then I'll maybe when it dries completely, I'll just finish the edges more with the, uh, you know, trimming a little bit more. But there's one. I think that's going to be fun, and it's very. It's going to feel great because it's going to be all like this is all one piece. But you'll I'll post a picture, but this one should when it dries it should be lighter than that side. So there's one card sort of started. Now the other. Let's see what else we've got going here. Now, the other thing I want to share with you is using, like, let's say if you have um, a, ma a master sheet that you've cut down and you want a letter on it. I mean, this one's kind of a, doesn't really have a lot of focal point. I mean, it depends on the ones 
if they, this one didn't really look, it wasn't lending itself to something, but these were. So I'm going to just show you these kind of, I was able to put a, finish a card here. And the watercolor, all I did was make little circles on my watercolor paper. And I'll show you how I did that. Be happy right now. And the world needs what, oh yes, what the world needs, what does it say? What the world needs is love or love is what the world needs. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how I did that. because That's really, that was fun. Um, I'm gonna take my paper and I have a little, I tore the paper there, but I'm gonna just take that, just this piece and I'm gonna do like a little master sheet using, I think it'd be fun to use some uh, artist crayon here. Now this one's the clear blender. So it's gonna just be fun making circles. I'm gonna make, circle, kind of like just big ones this time, not little ones, because I'm going to make this as a master sheet. So I'm just going to just make little, just different shapes, kind of not seeing what I'm doing, which I think is even more fun. And maybe a, a couple of spots here. Now I, I pretty much did it. I'm going to have to just go with it now. All right, so let's see what happens. So now I've got my watercolors. We've got our beautiful studio set here. And I'm just going to take that same brush that's been clean that out. Or I can just use a nice, just a big brush. Let's see. Something big. Big enough to just get some color down. And I'm going to take my, just going to pick up, pick a color. I'm going to pick blue and just see what I get. I'm going to make a mess here. I probably should have a a little sheet underneath because I do tend to go all the way outside the board boundaries. This is just fun to take. Just get your watercolors and start playing with color. Let's go. Let's see. Blue. I'm just going to go and kind of just make circles, just like I did with, as you can see, I've got the circles underneath from the making those beautiful circles. And I've got that nice little resist happening. And now I'm going to just pick up another color, maybe some yellow. But this is a really great set because I'm able to get all the colors that I want. And I'm straight out of the pan. I don't have to mix them. Now, the other set we have, the 12 piece set, you, you want to mix them. They're meant for mixing. Th these are good for mixing as well, but they I like that they're already out. <laughs> they're ready to go. And I'm just going to make kind of just put this color out. Or if I don't want to do washes of color, I can just go straight across and watch that happen. Watch the colors sort of mingle. And of course, I'm making a big, big mess. Trying to do all these things on one little table can be a little crazy. I'm just mixing up some purples and greens. There we go like that and just make a big just a gorgeous mix of colors you really can't make mud with these maybe some this gorgeous color right here this is the gold yellow kind of quinacridone on gold i just love that and just you now i've got a nice little master sheet that i can cut up into uh four pieces to make my or another set I like the I like this and I have some light I've not lost all my light so I'm just gonna let that sit but there's that's one way let that sit and then I'll cut that up into four pieces and I'll have another set of four artist trading cards and that's that one now let's see where we are on this one this one's still pretty wet but once I get it cut it'll be fun so that's one way you can use the uh, the artist trading card of uh, the artist crayons and what I like about these, these will go over anything. So if you want to do them, use them as an after thought, let's say this, this is an example. Um, this one, I just went with the artist training card over the collage and that blue line, that kind of messy line there is this blue color. I just, cro I just went crazy. It looks like this one needs it. So I'm going to do this, this one here. It needs something. It needs a little... A little line and I'll just kind of show you what I mean. I'm going to take a artist trading, I keep saying artist trading, artist crayon, and I'm just going to make a, I'm going to do like this 
thing. And I'm going to kind of go over like that. Now I've done, I've kind of gone off the line, but I like that it, I did that. It kind of added something to it. And that's what I love about this crayon because it goes over things that are already painted. It goes over acrylics, goes over you know, wax. If you have gouache, uh, things that, um, anything that you have. So now I just noticed, I want to show you that this splattered, my watercolor dish just splattered onto the paper here. And I really like that it was, that, that happened. <laughs> it was one of those happy accidents. Um, can't wait for that to dry because that needed the balance. And I just did it by accident. <laughs> I was able to get that. It's yeah, kind of funny. Um, let's see what else. So how's everybody doing? I don't know. Can't say, see there's some people watching. I'm excited. Um, so this one is pretty much done. I'm going to start setting some things aside and kind of finishing up or showing you some more things. And if you have any questions, of course, this one's ready. And I, usually as I make my cards, I make a pile that are kind of partially finished. And then I'll make a pile that I consider finished. Like I think these are pretty much finished here. Got them finished. And then this was one I did started earlier and I thought it was really cool. But it just needs something. It just it sort of has, it says I need some bright something bright, and I'm not really sure yet what I want to do with that. So this is like my un partially, like I've got backgrounds, I've got bits that are kind of ready but not quite ready. And this one, it needs something. I'm wondering. I'm gonna just try taking the white crane and seeing if I just scribble over with the white crane. It may just be a total wash, but I'm gonna try. Um, just gonna do it. I'm just gonna make, oh, oops, it's not that, it's not, there we go, that's not bad. So it just kind of softened, I'm sort of softening the area because I think it just is a little too grid-like. So I just did a little soft thing and I kind of like that now. And this is a this cray these wax these crayons are really nice for blending, um, softening areas, and it's not as white as I thought it would be, but I, I kind of like that softness. So that kind of made it more mysterious than just the grid alone. I'm going to do it again because I really like that. This time maybe with a different color just to see. I'm going to use pink. I know that's a strange one to do, but I'm going to just do it. I'm going to kind of cross that over and make a big loop de loop. And there, kind of a pink loop, like a ribbon, pink ribbon. Yep, there it is. Now that is starting to, for me, you know, it looks a little bit more interesting than to, just the grid by itself. But you can make a series and just kind of work on them. And then um, as you, I'll still keep it in the unfinished pile, which is this pile. And then the pile that when it's finished, like this one I just did, I showed you this a little, little bit ago. I think that turned out nice. I'll put that in my finished pile, which is here. And then I'll have, I'll have myself a series. Now, just a moment ago, I made a big, this kind of became a mess. So it just, the table is messy and I got stuff everywhere. So I'm gonna make this kind of like a purposeful mess now. So I'm gonna show you a little thing that I like doing. I'm gonna just take some watercolor I'm going to use a fusion brush because these are great brushes for control. And I'm going to take my, uh, not my hand, maybe a piece of paper here. I'm just going to take kind of, I'm going to make kind of a mask, just a little bit of a mask, just to kind of cover that area up. And now I'm going to spatter it just like I meant it. <laughs> it's, it's like when you make a mess, you can always, you know, start something new, make something out of that mess. So I'm going to just, it's a Bob Ross happy accident. I'm just going to keep splattering until I get that look that I'm looking for. Now I'm just going to lift it up and look at it. Yeah, now there we are. So that is now looking a lot better. And I'm going to move it away from my table so that I don't do any more splashing on it. And this is how fun it is. You can do get involved in an artist trading card swap and you can have so much fun. Now this one, you can make a series of 30 in an hour, I'm sure. Now this one is, uh, I'd like to do some dark colors. I'm gonna see, see what happens here if I scribble over black. So I'm just gonna take 
this and I'm going to go like, uh, uh, like that. <laughs> I like that better already. And I'm, I'm just not being attached to any of these things. I'm just going to kind of look at this. And uh, I just scribbled over it and made a new card. And you know, it'd be fun thinking about this, an artist trading card, because I just realized I scribbled over somebody's card, <laughs> somebody else's card. We could do artist trading cards and take it to another level and do partially finished ones and send them to somebody and let them finish it. I think that's an, an idea that maybe nobody, I don't know if anybody's done that before, but I think that would be fun. Uh, here, I'll do this scribble on this one. This is the one I should have scribbled. And I'm just going to scribble and there. I've got like this really fun kind of thing happening. And I'm enjoying that. And I can have that go in any direction I want. And maybe I'll put once for this one to be finished, I might take one of these little fun little sayings here. These are, you know, who doesn't have these? Everybody's got these, right? I hope. Um, these little snip, these are called chit chat, I think. Uh, little stickers, yeah, chit chat by Tim Holtz. And I think these are fun because they really, you can actually, there he has words and also statements, but I like this one. I think Aaron, can you explain a few different ways to actually trade the cards? Yes, okay, so you can host, you can look for a, a trading card. Here we go. You can look for, um, like online, look for artist trading card calls, you know, like places or that are doing it or people that are doing it it might often be on instagram may have if you just look up artist trading cards you may see uh something um, another thing you can host one if you feel like doing something like that this would be fun i'm gonna take this one off and redo it um you can host one like so i hosted one not so i didn't do such a great job so now i've learned i'm learning uh, that i can do better so what what you can do is if you host one you can do this with your friends. You can do this with your, you know, your community. This one I think is going to be good now. I see that I like it. I've got a little balanced area here, and that kind of works now. Um, so you would basically decide on a, a date that you want to make as a deadline. So let's say, like me, I've got one that's May first is the deadline. And if you want to join in, I can give you. <laughs> you can send me your. Uh, Send the information in the chat or down in that chat, and or I can put it, I, I can send you a private message, but I'm hosting it. So what it is, is that I'll have everybody send me their cards. So we've got like 20 people in the group that we have currently, and everybody makes 20 cards or up to 20. Basically, whatever amount you make, or cards you make, you, you get back in other people's cards. So let's say if I, you know, create five cards, or five cards and send five cards and they don't have to be the same they can be a series of they can be any mixture because you the, that you're not going to have to uh make them exactly the same in fact i think variety is better but um you then you you can send these in the mail and just postmark them you know whatever a couple stamps usually and then you're going to get back the same amount with different people's cards so Basically, you can host them or you can look for people who are hosting them. And they're really, the rules are really simple. They're two and a half by three and a half inches in size. And you want to have something like this on the back, whether it be hand. This is just printed on my laser printer. But if you want to just write it up by hand, do that. Um, just, you know, who it's from. If you want to put your email there, there's all different ways. You just look up artist trading cards in and Google them and you'll see what I mean. They're just, there's so many ways to do it. Um, so it's just fun. It's really fun. I'm gonna take, I'm hoping that helps. <laughs> I don't know if that answered your questions or not. Uh, I'm gonna take this, one of these really I busy I think we'll ones. ask you to get that information because we have a few people who wanna join. So. Who wanna be in the uh, artist training card swap that happens? Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, so, so we'll share cool. that information later, everybody. Keep your eyes out for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it'd be fun, maybe, if you think it would be, I think it'd be fun for us, for Yasutoma to host one. Um, if you want to do it, I, I'm happy to facilitate, but, um, you know, we can do it, a swap would be fun. I don't know how many people are here today, but it looks like about, you know, maybe we have about 30 or so, and that's a good number. Yeah, we have just um, over 30 watching right now, and I think, I don't know if this is quite accurate, but I think we got about, like, almost five yeses so far. 
So. Okay. So, you know, it'd be fun for you. Let's, let's, this is fun on the fly. If, if you don't mind, um, if everybody sends their card, their cards to Yasutomo and this, I'm just putting this out here because, and then, you know, I can facilitate or I can do the swap and send them out from my end, but maybe everybody can go to Yasutomo. Um, and at first, and then you send them to me, and then I um, I'll send them out to everybody. Can, does that sound like a, a good thing? Do, would you be willing? <laughs> I mean, we could do that. We could definitely do that. So, um, okay, I think cool. We will. I will kind of like come up with the details for that. Like make a post about it. Kind of like explaining again, and then yeah. giving the um like address to ship them to, and like a date, I guess, to do yeah. it by. So, so we'll pick a date. Things. Let's say um, yeah. today is March. Let's. Wait, yeah, like let's do this in June because I know you've got lots of things going on. June 1st would be a really good date. It gives us another time to do a little call about it. But you know, it'd be so cool is once we get, you get the cards that say deadline June 1st, um, you mail them to me and then I'll do the swap. And then the rules will be, and we'll get this information in, but everybody will need to put a self-addressed envelope, you know, like, basically self-addressed, self-stamped uh, or enough postage that's going to get it back. So you just need to include your postage on the envelope. So you would, if you have 20 cards, just make sure it's an envelope big enough for 20 cards to get back. If you have only five, you know, make it appropriate for that. And really, I think this would be fun, Phoebe. Um, anybody in that's watching or who watches this later, it, we can just make the deadline June 1st if you're okay with that, and June 1st, 2023, and the rules are only that you use two and a half by three and a half, and if you could use a Yasutomo product on there, it'd be fun. If you, if does it's not required, but if you do, let's say you made uh, something, if I can find mine, <laughs> and you did use the Detail Master, or you did use a piece of rice paper that we, that, you know, Yasutomo carries, if you add, if you have that information, just write it on the back because then, you know, like for this one, I just made this and it's got, I had used pure paper and I used the Hanshi. And I just writing it somewhere so that, you know, we can kind of identify which products were used. I think that'd be fun. And we, and then it doesn't, but it doesn't have to be the major focus. So if you don't have any Yasutomo products, don't worry, you can still, enjoy this swap and not have any pressure you know but i just would put it on the back let's say like this one here here it's just a very simple watercolor uh very simple watercolor with just three lines and a little fake grass happiness is a journey not a destination and then i put this is blank i haven't filled it in yet but for the notes section and what i could do is put one of these in a maybe a pdf I'm thinking of a way to send this, but you you know, just doing a form like this, you can find them all over Google. Um, but really, this is the Yasutomo swap and just put like I'd say which product I use. I use the Detail Master number uh, number three, and I use my watercolor set, my Niji watercolor set. Then that gives us kind of we can take a nice photo of all these beautiful picture, you know, cards that you've all made, and then we we know what you use to make them. And so that's always helpful, even for even if it's not Yasutomo products. Just like, what did you use to make this? It really it makes it really helpful for the person receiving it. Um, like on this one, it's been stitched with a machine. I used pure paper, and I used the little uh, the little chit chat from Tim Holtz. And if I just put that information on the back, then because this one it wasn't planning to go out as an artist trading card, but. Uh, then I then someone who's receiving it kind of knows, oh, that's what you used. And that would be kind of a nice thing to do. Same with this. I would just say Niji watercolors, detail master, and boom, or whatever you did use. Um, just be fun. That's I think that would be the only rule, just so that we could have really information. That inform sounds really fun. So we will definitely post about it because a lot of people seem interested and it just sounds like a really great way to connect. And like, there's a little community growing and uh, just through watching these. So I would love to give us an opportunity to like do something interactive. I think that's great. I do awesome. have a couple questions, Karen. Um, One, how many would we make? Don't know if we want to cap it. Do you have any? I, or yeah. Talk about that later. I think the most 
because this I as I've done this before recently. Um, if you know, if you don't, if you want to make, I don't know how many people are participating. So I think I was just limited to uh, twenty cards. No more okay. than twenty. All right. So we'll say no more than twenty, and then we'll, yeah. um, of course, like I was saying, or or like what we're mentioning, we'll have like a written post about this out later. And since this is going to be out in June, we'll have time. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll say no more than twenty for now. Someone else asked, how do you store these cards? Do you display them or use baseball card sure. sheets like those plastic ones or in a binder? Yeah, I have different ways. For storing, like for when you receive them, I mean, I've got a video, uh, I believe, or I don't know where I've got it, or I've done it before, but you can make little uh, pot books. I did this for fodder school, actually, this little pocket book, but it's a one sheet book that holds the car cards. I've done flutter books that hold these cards. Um, but really, if you want to do this, protect your cards. One of the things I would suggest, because I've already made a mess of some cards just by having them on my table today, <laughs> like this one's, I got to stick it back in there before I mess it up. These little sleeves you can buy, these little plastic sleeves, um, they just fit the cards perfectly. And that protects them from greasy, wet, you know, fingers. And it also, when you do that, they're really cheap. You can buy them on Amazon, artist trading card sleeves. Um, there's you can also buy the page ones that are like page protectors, but I don't like those. I like these single sleeves because I can put them wherever I want. I can um, put them in a journal page if I want. I can actually take this sleeve and glue it to a journal page and I can lift the card in and out if I want to. So just just simple sleeves and then it protects your cards. That's one way. Um, I did have one on this for this one. I don't know where I put it, but anyway, um, that's one way. Or you can just put them in a little... I think it'd be fun to make a little box, like a folded box. What we could do is maybe in a future Facebook Live, we could fold a box that will fit these. I think that would be fun. Or we could fold a little book or something to fit our cards. These don't hold a lot. So if you have 20 cards, this is, doesn't hold very much. Um, here's this one I really like, simple. But here's just one that's only watercolor only. So you can see... It has just watercolor and the detail master. Simple, simple, easy, doesn't take a lot of time. But yeah, 20 cards, and then we could either come up with a box or something, or you know what else would work? Because these are, well, these are a little bigger than uh, business cards. I think we could make, I've got a little folder. It's a little uh, folio that we can uh, fold together at a Facebook Live that will fit these perfectly and you can stack uh, at least 20 in the in the thing. So let's want to plan that for the future, Phoebe, we can do that. I love that. And I'll just mention someone else said that you could also hang them with those little tiny clothespins, which sounds quite cute. Oh, how cute, like those little clips and just do like a little banner of cards hanging in your studio. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, especially with different people's artwork. That would be so cool. And that's what makes me think that doing it portrait style is probably better than the uh, landscape because you can hang them and then it will look like a little banner. I think that'd be cool. So just a suggestion, if you're doing it, you may just think about doing it more portrait than just as an idea. I, for some reason, was doing the landscape and I'm not really enjoying the finish. The landscape isn't going to be as versatile. And here's a portrait one. And this one, I'm not sure. That's a portrait one too. So, but just watercolor, you know, get your watercolors out and start playing. And then, or if you have bits of paper and rice papers, start making collages. This one, when I when it dries, now you see I put this dark piece when we were talking. I put this dark pure paper mixed media bit there. And then when it dries, I'm gonna put either a handwritten one or I could use one of these little guys here. And I think I would put like, here we go, just a word, of course it needs to dry, it's really wet, but I wanna just show you, I'm gonna put it right there just to balance it out like that, except it needs to be glued, it's not glued. Now the other last little bit I might do with this, this one has plenty of things going on, but if you wanted to take a, like a little part of something like, you know, if you have a piece, something you want to, look, this is way, doesn't need it, but I could take a little, little piece that I have painted and then I could add, you just keep building layers. You know, like this one's kind of cool. Um, 
You can just keep building layers. I like this one a lot. I might choose, I might take that and then put that over here. But this is what's fun about making this, this process is kind of fun. Just to kind of decide, all right, how am I gonna do this? You know, where am I gonna put this together? And having it out a little bit, like if you have it sticking out of your card, that may be pose a problem for people who are using sleeves. But sometimes I have, I put a little bit of something on the outer edge and it kind of sticks out just a little, maybe not too far, but a little bit. I think that one's kind of fun. I might just do that and let it dry. So that is, that's pretty much it. I, unless you have more questions and you'd like me to cut this up. Oh, I can cut this up now. It's ready to be cut up. So I'm gonna show you that. And this is now kind of curled. But uh, what I'm going to do is, of course, I can either flatten it out by just bending it with my hands. It does, it's still not completely dry. And now here's what I love about the paper. So two and a half by, so I'm just going to make a two and a half inch cut. And just make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to hit it with my cutter. And then, another, and then a three and a half inch right here. And now I have four bases for my cards. And I think they're so, so pretty so far. And it's just amazing when you take a large, something large and you put it down and how oh, you can get really a different look all together. So these are gonna be really nice little bases. And then this one, still really wet. I can't cut that yet. But you see where I'm going with this. And I've already made enough for my trade <laughs> when we do it. And everybody will get a card. We're gonna get cards from, if we do 20 each, um, I think that's a fair amount, 20, just send 20 and you'll get 20 back. And, and you don't have to do 20. I think we'll have, right, because yeah. we'll even out however many. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like in my last swap, someone sent, she could only do few because she didn't have time. And she got the um, those back. She got a few back. And it was you know, very satisfying for everybody just to get other people's artwork. And, you know, you can make it special. And you can, you can't really... You gotta kind of make this artwork and let it go because you don't know where it's going. It just goes into the universe, into this universe. And it's kind of fun to see what comes back. It's really, really fun. So that, now are we doing a giveaway or anything today? We no, playing? not today. Um, I usually say when we're gonna do a giveaway in advance. Okay. So sorry, everybody, not today. We don't have one on the books, um, but thank yeah. you for, for checking. No big deal, um, I should have mentioned it. <laughs> But anyway, Thank so just, up. oh, sorry about that. A recap, I wanted to recap this because yeah, these are available now. And if you're a watercolor, if you love watercolor, these brushes are amazing. The Fusion brush, and they're really reasonably priced and they're really fun to use. And that's what I've been using with my watercolors. And they give you so much control and you can get little fine details up to larger washes with the bigger ones, but I just wanted to tell you those are really cool and they're available. They're in, in the, they're out there in the world now. So, which is really exciting. So when you're done, just stack up, like when you're finished, just get your, pay all your cards ready and then put the little backings on them and then write your information on the back with your email. If you want to have email, you know, connection, put your email on the back. You know, you don't have to write a title. You can just don't have to. You can just put Yasutomo if you want. Um, it's really open. Just an email is always good. A name and an email. Um, and just to so people know who you are and where and uh you can connect with the people who you received your cards from. So there you go. I hope that's uh that was fun and I had fun. I'm gonna keep creating. I don't know, but I'm just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> This was so great. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Karen, for sharing and inspiring people and coming up with this really fun idea. A lot of people are really excited. Oh, I'm um, so I excited. I can't wait to see what everybody does. And we'll just keep reminding you that we're going to be doing this and it's going to be fun. Yeah. And probably even come up with another um, video like Karen was mentioning about like things that you can create to hold and store your cards. So that'll be super awesome, too. So we'll have a series now. We've got a series <laughs> yeah. and yeah, and a direction. And I love that. And we'll, so we'll do like, when, as we're getting closer, like from maybe before June, maybe 
in May, we can do the folder, the, the, the folio. And what you're going to need for that is really simple. Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So it's not too hard. We can do that with an eight and a half by 11 sheet to make something that will fit these. 